How important is it for your optometrist and your surgeon to be in communication with each other regarding your cataract or refractive surgery? In this episode of OcuTalk, optometrist Azra Fazil Jamal explains what co-management of ocular surgery means, what the process looks like, the benefits to the patients, and the new advancements we should be on the lookout for. Hello and welcome to OcuTalk. Today we're going to be having a conversation with optometrist Azra Fazil Jamal. Doctor, thank you for joining us today. Hello, thank you for having me. Well, we're really excited for you to be here uh, to get us started. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Yes. So I've been a practicing optometrist for exactly four years now. I graduated in 2021 from the Michigan College of Optometry and joined a small private practice here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And my area of focus is the co-management of refractive and ocular surgery. Well, perfect, because that's what we would like to talk about today. So to get us started, what exactly is refractive surgery? Refractive surgery is just eye surgery that's designed to reduce your dependence on glasses and contact lenses. So it's really um, a choice that patients make. It's a lifestyle upgrade, just wanting to be able to see the world clearly naturally. Okay, so what part does co-management play in refractive surgery? So co-management in the way that I participate in it is really just me collaborating with the uh, refractive surgeon who's actually performing the procedure. My role is to really, you know, identify the patients that would be good candidates for refractive surgery, determine exactly which refractive surgery they're best suited for, make sure they have the right expectations going in, uh, making sure that they're healing properly, managing any side effects or complications, and just kind of guiding them through that whole journey start to finish. So what can patients expect uh, from the different doctors that will be a part of their uh, surgical process? Perfect. So most patients have a local eye doctor. This is who they see yearly or every other year for those routine eye checkups. They get their glasses prescriptions, their contact lens prescriptions from that provider. Um, at some point, either the patient decides maybe with or without that optometrist's input that, hey, I want to, you know, think about having LASIK or PRK or any of the other uh, refractive surgeries that exist. At that point, either, you know, they will seek out us on their own or they will be referred over by their local eye doctor. When they get to me, you know, I meet them. I take a comprehensive look at their eye health and then identify if they're a candidate or not for, you know, whichever eye surgery they're thinking about. If they're not a candidate for their originally intended refractive surgery, I try to find a really suitable alternative. So how important is the communication between the optometrist and the surgeon when it comes to co-managing refractive surgeries? It is really important. I mean, it is the key to a good outcome. Um, so the surgeon and the co-managing optometrist really have to be on the same page about everything. Um, and the surgeon, you know, is not going to maybe spend as much time with the patient as I am. You know, I'm usually the first point of contact. I have, you know, much longer conversations with them. I get to know them really well. I give, you know, my honest input of what I think that they would be best suited for. And if you have a really good trusting relationship with the surgeon you work with, they're going to take that input seriously and um, use it in their surgical planning process. And you both have to be, you know, really available to one another afterwards too. You know, if, if there's some kind of complication that's um, out of my reach to manage, you know, they have to be willing to step back in. Um, or if they're, you know, not available for something that they feel comfortable with me managing, I have to be really available at all times for that. Okay, so to circle back to what you were talking about a few minutes ago, um, how do you determine if a patient is a good candidate for refractive surgery? And how do you know which surgery is the right, right one for them? Right. So we're looking for, you know, healthy eyeballs and healthy individuals. Um, patients that come, you know, to us, if they have any kind of pathology, the first step is to get that under control and maybe pursue refractive surgery later. Um, but if a patient comes in and uh, they're healthy, I'm going to recommend something. Um, so generally in my patients ages 18 to 46, I'm recommending something like LASIK or PRK, 
or ICL, for example, implantable contact lens. Um, if the patients are a little bit older and already in bifocal glasses or progressives and they have you know, trouble with their reading as well as their distance, I'm gonna be recommending more of a lens-based surgery. Um, what can patients do before, during, and after surgery to maximize their outcomes? So before surgery, one of the biggest things that we're looking for is the stability of their eyeglass prescription. And we want to make sure that those numbers are not wildly fluctuating from one year to the next. And the only way to know that is to be getting that yearly eye exam. So that's one of the biggest things you can do beforehand, as well as just, you know, properly following contact lens hygiene rules, not over wearing your contacts, things like that, not sleeping in them. Um, and then when it comes time to actually doing your refractive surgery, you want to make sure you're following all of our directions. So uh, making sure you're filling the proper uh, prescription eye drops, making sure that um, you are listening to us when we tell you what the restrictions are afterwards, not rubbing your eyes, things of that nature, coming in for all of your follow-up appointments, not missing any appointments, and just listening to your body. And if something feels a little off, to let us know right away so that we can step in. So at what point after surgery can a patient be referred back to their local optometrist? It really depends on the surgery that they had. So for example, with LASIK or PRK or laser vision based refractive surgeries, um, they're typically within my care for a very short period of time. You know, I'm seeing them at one day out, possibly a week out, a month out. And then three months out, maybe if it's indicated, but usually after about one month, they can go back to their local eye doctor's office to set up their eye exam for the following year. Um, if they've had a lens replacement surgery, which is um, sometimes referred to as cataract surgery, then they're going to be within our care for a little bit longer, usually until they're at least three months out. Um, and then after that point, they can go back to their local eye doctor. Okay. So what is the difference between standard cataract surgery and refractive lens exchange? That's an excellent question. And it's a question a lot of my patients have. So standard cataract surgery is widely available to Americans who are 65 and older here. It's covered by Medicare and you know um, they can go to a lot of different comprehensive ophthalmologists to get that done. Um, the goal of that surgery is to really um, eliminate or reduce the dependence of glasses for seeing far away but really no guarantees can be made about it. Um, and a lot of patients, most patients actually still need reading glasses afterwards. So most of my patients, they don't wanna wait until they're 65 years old to have that kind of an outcome. You know, They wanna get in a lot earlier in life. And that's where you know we use the term refractive lens exchange. It's basically the same exact surgery in a younger individual who wants more years out of their new vision. So what are the benefits to the patient when it comes to co-management of ocular surgeries between the optometrist and the surgeon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, pursuing refractive surgery in the first place is a very, very brave decision for our patients. It's a decision that often takes years. And, you know, even just coming in for their first consult, they're, you know, debating that. Should I do it? Should I not? Am I ready? Am I not? Um, so when they actually truly make that decision that, hey, I'm ready and I want to pursue this, they want to be really well taken care of. So the more doctors that can be involved in their care, um, the more comfortable that they feel throughout the whole process. So how about the rise in telemedicine? Has that affected co-management of ocular surgeries? Yeah, I can see how it's starting to, for sure. Um, you know, there are you know, larger surgical centers that because of their high volume, they don't uh, always have a doctor in person that can see every single patient. So a lot of these patients can be screened, you know, by the phone or with a video call like this by the optometrist um, to identify, you know, the, the candidates that are suited for it. And then it's only if they pass certain screening criteria that then they are invited to come into the office for that full dilated surgical workup. Um, at my office, that's not how we do it. You know, we just kind of dive right in. You start talking to the doctors right away and getting to know us um, personally. But, you know, I can see how that can be beneficial in different types of surgical offices. Okay, so from your perspective right now, what are some of the most innovative or disruptive technologies in the industry? Yeah, so earlier in the interview, I mentioned something called ICL. Um, it's actually a surgery that stands for implantable columnar lens or implantable contact lens. It's actually been around for about three decades and not many people know about it. 
Um, so everyone here is LASIK all the time and LASIK is just, you know, um, become this catch all term for any surgery that gets you out of glasses. Uh, but there are actually different eye surgeries that can get you out of glasses if you're not, you know, willing to move forward with LASIK or if you're looking for an alternative or if you don't qualify for LASIK, there's this ICL now and um, it's really something that's approved for more moderate to extreme levels of nearsightedness. And it's a contact lens that instead of wearing it on the surface of your eye, it's actually implanted inside the eye. And we are just seeing phenomenal results with it. You know, patients that thought their numbers were too strong or maybe thought their cornea was a little bit too thin for LASIK. Well, this completely bypasses all of that and allows you to still be able to wake up and see clearly. And this contact lens just sits there quietly. You can't see it. You can't feel it. It's really a, a very innovative surgery. And, you know, in the more uh, cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange world, there are now light adjustable lenses. You know, I can't just not talk about those. That has been, you know, really disruptive in a good way. Um, so basically, these are lenses that are implanted in uh, patients' eyes. They replace that natural lens that's, you know, stopped focusing properly and that's, you know, starting to look a little bit yellow and cloudy. So it's an artificial lens that after it's been implanted can be customized. So it gives patients the opportunity to really test drive their vision. You know, we see what kind of an outcome they get right out of surgery. And then, you know, somewhere around one or two months down the road, they start seeing me for light adjustments. And I ask them, what do you want to change about your vision? You know, do you want that distance vision a little bit better? Do you want your near vision a little bit better or your computer vision? And whatever they're looking for, I can give them. And that's the only lens out there that can be customized after it's been implanted by the surgeon. So I'm having a lot of fun, you know, uh, in being involved in all kinds of eye surgeries now. Well, that all sounds very exciting. Is there anything else you want to tell our audience today? I would say anyone who is thinking about refractive surgery um, to really do your research, um, just know that there are different options out there now, um, options that may not have existed decades ago that now exist and, you know, people are getting wonderful outcomes with. Um, find out who in your area is doing these surgeries and um, reach out to me if you have any questions about them specifically. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Doctor. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.